The level of housing insecurity that we have now is extraordinarily elevated. The pandemic put increased pressure on our rental market because as home prices spiked, people moved into the rental market and this further crowded out accessible and affordable markets. So all of that drove a, a 35 to 40% increase in rents in over a three year period between 2020 and 2023. Incomes have not increased anywhere near that much. So that has put an enormous strain on particularly lower income households. I'm Keith Bentley. I'm an associate research professor at the University of Arizona. I focus mostly on housing insecurity and homelessness. I've worked on a lot of evaluations of local homeless service programs. Support from the federal government through the stimulus payments and child tax credits, that's kind of fallen away. Credit card debt has been spiking over the last year. People are managing to make their rent, and now you have a lot of people who are just hanging on. This has led to a, a very dramatic increase in homelessness in our community. I'm Katie Ratliff. I'm the executive director of the Common Sense Institute Arizona. And we look at the fiscal and economic impact of local and state policies all across the state. Homelessness is one of the, the biggest humanitarian and public health crisis that state and local leaders face. Something seems to have changed around 2017, and the population stops declining. It begins to increase. Around 2020, it begins to increase very rapidly, and the number of shelter beds continues to decrease over time. There was a policy shift about 20 years ago where the federal government and even state and local policymakers determined that investing in what's called permanent supportive housing or housing first uh, was the right policy approach. I'm Brandy Champion, Housing First Program Director for the City of Tucson. The Housing First Program is an evidence-based practice where people experiencing homelessness have immediate access to housing. I've worked where there is prerequisite to housing and you've got to, you know, submit a, your analysis and you've got to meet a certain criteria and you have to be working so long and you have to save so much money in order to get into housing. This flips it on its head um, because how can you do any of those things when you don't have a starting place? Housing First as an approach is highly researched at this point. It is, it is identified through empirical evidence as a very effective strategy for helping people exit, especially unsheltered homelessness. And that is because it says we need to treat the whole person and we need to get people stabilized in their housing before we try to address all these other uh, issues that people might be dealing with. Housing is the ultimate. I believe it's a basic human right. Housing first works if the root cause is a lack of housing. It also can work if you have a culture of accountability that is really focused on addressing the root cause, even after someone has achieved housing. I want to be clear that Housing First doesn't necessarily work for everybody. Everybody has a different journey. You know, we deal with people that are unsheltered and experiencing substance use, mental health crisis, um, people that are justice involved, people that have many barriers to getting in and maintaining their housing. Today I'm coming down the Aviation Parkway. I want to go down through here and just reiterate and see if there's any case manager connections that need to be made. Hey, City of Tucson, anybody home? Hey bud, do you need any connection? Are you in connected with MDOT and housing out here? When you're making like a contact with like the encampment, I mean, the very first thing you want to ask them is, what can I do for you? I mean, you got to meet these people right where they're at. You didn't get on with the MDOT program with the housing. That's all right, it's not out of the question. I mean, we can do it solo. I was there at the same spot that he was at. Sometimes it's just, you know, that guy might need a bus ticket home or he may just need food today. I mean, so having us as being that, that first initial uh, contact is, uh, I think it's very vital to the community. It's a really vigorous process to do those. People have to be willing to engage. Sometimes people tell you to get lost you know, until they keep seeing you. I'm gonna just check these folks over here real quick. What's up, man, how are you? 
Are you uh, working with MDOT for housing out here? And that is our job here in Housing First. It's about building that trust and outreach with our outreach services and then connecting them to a navigator that can navigate them through the process of getting into a house and then connecting them to a case manager that can case manage them while they're in that house. Well, I got some water. You guys need some bottled water at least? You guys good? Perfect, man. All right, stay safe. The overall outcomes of the state and at the county level in both Maricopa and Pima are, don't seem to be getting better. And so I think that that's kind of the intent of the report is to really put this in context and ask ourselves as a state, are we, are we doing the best that we can? What we found is the rate of unsheltered individuals around the state is about 50%. But in Pima County, Pima County is an outlier it's closer to 70%. And then finally, the total dollar amount that's being spent is about a billion dollars statewide. Most of that's attributable to Maricopa County, that's where most of the population is, but about 100 million, 100 to 150 million of that is directly attributable to Pima County in Southern Arizona. The volume of resources that our homeless service providers have, all of that funding is very small relative to the, the volume of people who are flowing into and remaining homeless. We're not resource heavy. I think a lot of times people want to blame the city of Tucson or Pima County or what have you, um, but I think it's because we don't have the resources to carry the load. I think with the money that this, this division gets, we're being pretty effective compared to expense of emergency room visits incarceration, what have you. If you don't want to be spending so much money on mitigating the consequences of an affordable housing shortage, why don't we focus on the root cause and spend that money on the affordable housing that would obviate a lot of the need uh, for these services. We really want to challenge policymakers to think about, you know, are our policies the most compassionate that they could be? People think homelessness is just the guy at the bus stop smoking fentanyl, and it is not. It is not. Those people out in encampments and, and experiencing homelessness and in their addiction are my peers. They are my peers. I can relate to them. I know what they're going through. They're on a treadmill. They can't get off. And a lot of people are like, well, foo-foo. They, they can just get off. It is not that easy. No one is disposable. Every human being brings something to the table. When we opened Wildcat, we opened that in February of 2022. We've served quite a bit of people there. We actually cleared the Golf Links encampment the first time with that as a pilot. We're seeing some high numbers of elderly people becoming homeless for the first time in their life. Developers come in, slap some paint on it, some nice linoleum on the floor and call it $1,200, $1,500, and you're talking about a person that's got an $800 fixed income, right? No tell, motel. We use that as shelter for a while. We give people a place to stay, quite frankly, while we were looking for housing for them. And Oracle, that was right next to it, where they're developing Milagro, when we bought No Tell, that came with that middle lot, and that was the birth of Milagro. So um, that's going to be a 63-unit uh, senior living apartment. Some of those people were housed there, so now they can afford to live. Yeah, just, yeah you're welcome, man. Because it feels like you're just kind of sometimes we're just going through the motions and going through the motions. Well, now with Housing First, we're, we're done with that. We're fixing it. We're not talking about doing outreach. We were just literally just meeting people where they're at. We're not like, oh, there you go. You're in housing. We're done. No, we have an end goal. We want to see those people become peers for the next guy that's still suffering or still experiencing homelessness. It is worth it because the cost of just rehousing people who keep falling out of housing is more uh, than the cost of that stabilization. So I think that that's what it's about, understanding that one agency or government agency or what have you is not the solve all end all for, for homelessness. We've got to do it as a community. Hi. I'm Tom McNamara, host of Arizona Illustrated. Thank you for watching this Arizona Illustrated story here on YouTube. And if you like that one, well, here's another story we think you'll like.